Greetings, UUCUC. Welcome to the first installment of the progressive meal for the UU Missing UU Service Auction. Uh, what I thought would be really cool is to show you how to make a series of meals where there's one major cooking event each night, and then you can use leftovers from the previous night's cooking to form the base and components of the next three meals. So today, I'll be working on making my signature pizza pasta sauce, which you can try as just a component for a basic pasta. And then tomorrow, we'll take that sauce and use it as a component, um, as the topping for making a pizza uh, that you could top with your own favorite toppings, where the major task will be if you wanted to either making bread dough or making a pizza topping that you wanted. And then on the third day, because you'll already have had some leftover bread dough, uh, potentially, um, as well as the sauce, you can combine that all to make a vegetarian or um, meat, like chicken parm or veggie sub um, parm, and which you can then bake and eat uh, with the, the dough that you made previously using the red sauce for that. So kind of this whole meal uh, set involves around different Italian foods using cheese and red sauce and bread uh, for, for multiple days meals. So today I wanted to talk about uh, the pasta sauce. So you know we can, you can, we can start, you can see uh, laid out basically all the components that you need and I can quickly uh, talk you through it. Um, the way that it normally starts is with a vegetable base. I'm making enough, probably more than enough for two people to go through all three of these meals. You could have this and you'd be okay. Um, but I use two medium size onions. I've got red onions, so you can use those. Um, two medium, or actually they're kind of large-ish beets um, that will be peeled and grated. Um, and then four carrots um, that will also be peeled and grated. So the idea is to have about equal parts um, chopped onions and grated beets and grated carrots all will get sauteed in a nice um, Dutch oven to which we'll then add, add one head of chopped garlic, cook that down for a little bit, um, cooking that all down in just refined olive oil or canola oil, whatever you want to use. Um, then we'll be adding the herbs and spices. So I've got a whole bunch. Um, this is what two ounces of fresh basil. Um, if you had it really dried, you could use a tablespoon of dried basil, uh, a teaspoon of oregano, which is here, and then half a teaspoon each of thyme and parsley. Um, so that's a nice Italian seasoning blend. If you like a different Italian seasoning blend, you can use that, or even just Italian seasoning if you've got that. Um, and then also some salt and some pepper. That's what I will then add to the sauteed vegetables. And then my trick to getting a nice, thick, rich pasta sauce pretty quickly and efficiently is actually to reconstitute it this amount with two cans of tomato paste. So here I've got a can version and a jar version. It doesn't matter, you can buy whatever tomato paste you like. And you'll add that to uh, the sauce with about, I'll use in this case, a cup and a half of wine. Uh, loosely measured, um, and then probably about another cup of water. And what that does is after you've cooked down all the vegetables, you're just rehydrating uh, the sauce up to the thickness that you want for pasta or pizza or whatever your application is. Um, so those are the rough ingredients. Uh, the hope now with this plan is to go through the cooking process with the video rolling, and if I'm lucky, I can then trim it down into a coherent feed. So in this case, if I'm going to start my cooking, um, really probably the first thing that I would do is, since I've opened my bottle of wine, um, pour myself a glass for a while I'm cooking. Um, that's always a, a good process as we move forward. And then save uh, the rest for adding uh, to the pasta sauce. Uh, in this case, it's just a nice red blend with a little bit of fruity flavors, and you can kind of check it and make sure it's not vinegar. So yeah, there we go, quite tasty. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna get started uh, chopping the vegetables. So add a fair bit of oil um, into the pot. I know some folks want to cook all the vegetables 
kind of as minimally as possible, but really this sauce is pretty healthy to begin with, so I don't mind adding a fair bit of cooking oil as we go forward. Probably, I don't know, eighth of a cup or something like that is where I end up at. Um, just on a nice medium heat is good to go. Um, chop the onions however you like. Um, I like to cut the tops, cut them in half, and then peel. My favorite way to dice the onions is once across the top, make some slits in, and then just chop down into dice pieces like so, making sure that you protect your fingers. Over. So that's onion one. Into the pot we go. And get stirred. The nice spatula. I think a spatula is better for scraping the bottom than using um, a spoon, actually. I think a spatula works a bit nicer. And so now we'll just repeat the same for the second onion. And so if you're kind of curious about the reduction amount that I use, I'll get it a little closer to the camera. And you can see it's just like a nice, maybe quarter inch thick onion dice into the pot. And the strategy with this process, because it's on a nice low heat, kind of medium, medium low, is that I'll just keep layering the vegetables that require progressively shorter cooking time, so the onions are gonna take the longest. Um, then we'll do the carrots, uh, and then we'll do the beets. So that's kind of the strategy. Um, if you're gonna grate, rather than chop into small pieces, my suggestion with the carrots is to only cut off the bottoms, not both sides, because then you'll have a nice handle for when you're doing the grating. All right, well, welcome back. Um, so now I've got a nice sizzle on the onions. They're starting to cook down, so I'll give them a stir. And I'll turn the heat down one more notch now that my pan is hot. Uh, you'll notice that I have four nicely peeled carrots. So I'll pull out my grater, use the largest setting on the grater, box grater that I have, um, and simply grate all four of the carrots. It takes a little bit of work, uh, but I really think it's worth it compared to chopping um, if you have a, a fairly high quality box grater uh, like this. Otherwise, you've got to dice the carrots pretty fine, or they're going to be kind of, um, you know, they're just going to be texture that you might not want in your sauce. That said, it's all up to you. If you like the feel of big carrots or beets uh, to munch on, uh, your pizza or your pasta, feel free, you know, you can, you can do what you like. But it doesn't take too long to break these down. Okay, so the second set of carrots are going into the pot. Um, those are actually four very large carrots. So I'm making, again, quite a large batch today. Um, I think you would be perfectly fine making half this batch. You'll notice I'm making a little bit of a mess, so I always keep the kitchen towel um, handy just on my cupboard below my cooking space so that I can clean up for myself. Um, and you can see in the corner that I have the lovely jazz dog. Uh, who, whenever anything drops on the floor, will right on cue come and eat it. So, you know, my kitchen cleaning is a little bit easier than perhaps folks uh, who don't have a furry friend to, to clean up after them. So, that's fun. Again, give it a stir. Right now that we've added all the carrots that we need, right the next step is beets. Um, so, for that, um, the process is about the same. I've got two um, nice uh, red beets here, again, fairly large. So my same process is to get them ready for grating. So I cut off one end of the beet, 
um, and then peel it so that I can grate uh, the, the amount. Oh, turns out these, in fact, aren't red beets. These are the fun, um, well, what are these, Chattanooga beets or something like that, that are kind of uh, two tone. So I don't know if my pizza sauce is going to be quite the nice purple uh, that it has been in the past, but I'm sure it will be delicious. So we'll give that a go right so at the ends. We'll just peel the beets. Down. So now we're ready to grate the beets. Again, same process as with the carrots. It's great, great, great. And as you go, using the We've now made quite a pile of vegetables for cooking. I'll just quickly scrape the remainder of the veggies off the cutting board. Get them out of the pot. Stay a little bit clean with my towel. By the time you've added all those beets along with the carrots, you'll probably need a little bit more oil. So this would be a good time to add that. And in order to help the water come out a little bit faster, give it a few vats of salt um, at this point to help them cook down. Now at this point, your pot is going to be a pretty thick um, grate of carrots, onions, and beets. And you want to just take stock of about like the total volume of the food that you're cooking down. Like in my case, it's about a third the way up the rim of the pot. And you want to watch for that because you know that you're ready for adding the garlic and the seasonings when that started to cook down by a third to a half. Um, so the next stage of the process for me is to start prepping all of the other vegetables um, so that we're ready for the cook down stage. And of course, as you're moving through, feel free to clean as you go. So the next stage in the process um, is to start prepping the seasonings for the sauce. So I start with one head of garlic. Uh, since I know that I'm going to use a whole head for my batch, I actually think it's the most efficient um, to process the whole head of garlic all at once. So I roughly uh, peel the outside just by kind of scraping off uh, the edges. And then I found that I have everything I need to really efficiently smash and chop. But basically, I'm just going to cut around on my cutting board the tops of the garlic and then the bottoms. And so I'll just cut right through the top, like so. So you should be able to see here that I cut off the top. And then if I'm careful, with my knife skills, I can cut the bottom off as well as I slowly turn uh, the garlic around. You won't be able to cut through the woody stem until you've gotten about halfway through. And then that should actually just fairly quickly separate um, most of the garlic heads uh, from their base. And I guess the really proper chef way to do it is kind of at the head of a knife, right? You take a nice heavy knife and kind of smash it with your hand like so. Well, personally, I really worry that one of those days I'm going to grab the edge of my knife blade and cut myself. So I know that whenever I do this, I'm using these cans of tomato paste and they have a nice little lip at the bottom here that's maybe a few centimeters tall. So my preferred garlic smashing strategy is the can. Boom, done. No waste, and that little lip even controls the garlic so it doesn't fly off the kitchen table. They're gonna, the garlic's gonna have a lot of time to cook down, so I like to just chop each individual clove a little bit, one by one, um, and then I'll just go through and take the whole mess of garlic a new size reduction as a group. Obviously, use whatever nice skill technique you find most appealing. You know, everyone comes at this process with different levels. You can see, now I've reduced the whole head of garlic. 
and give a fair number of fine pieces. And I'll then just scrape that onto my plate where I'm going to collect all of my other uh, seasonings and components that I add after the vegetables have cooked down. So you can see. Um, now, if you've not chopped up a bunch of fresh basil before, um, the strategy I like to use is similar to how maybe people cut collards. Um, and I had some Thai friends um, in grad school who showed me that basically if you take all the basil leaves and you kind of stack them up in this uh, little pouch kind of system, then you can take these basils, finish it up uh, with one really big basil, like this big leaf here, so it's a giant basil. You can put it on the outside, and then you can wrap all your basils into a roll. Right, so you've got this tightly wound little roll of basils. And then, to chop it really nice, you just go through with your knife uh, and come down, and you get these nice little basil chiffonades. I think that's the technical term. Um, these little like rolls um, that would give you these really nice fine strips of basil like that, right? So that's pretty cool. And then if you want smaller pieces of basil for your sauce, right? So when I end up with that chopping, you end up with these nice little rolls. If you want smaller pieces, just go through and chop uh, across. And now you've got a whole bunch of fairly uniform um, squares of basil, right? So that's the end of that. And then right on the plate for a dish. So if you're like me, don't forget to stir the pot or things will start to burn. So just keep every couple minutes, you know, give a stir. Let that get a nice reduction. Make sure you scrape off any bits that are starting to stick on the bottom. And you're slowly just pulling your moisture out of these, these vegetables. I'll give you a quick status update. You can see they're already starting to cook down a fair bit. I'm not making too much of a mess. Um, now, at this point that I've done the carrots, the onions, the beets, the garlic, and the basil, I'm done with all the fresh ingredients. So I'm just going to take a moment to clean up my workspace before I work on seeding. So now, this is a good time um, to take stock of the process. Your vegetables are cooking down, they're slowly reducing their moisture, you're done with all of your chopping, so you've been able to clear your cooking space of the knife, the cutting board, wash your hands so you can feel clean again. Where we're at now is we're just collecting the seasonings so that when the vegetables are cooked down, you can add your seasoning blend plate to that pot and reconstitute your delicious sauce. If you, like me, are by now starting to get a little bit hungry, it's also not a bad time to put a pot of water um, on the stove and get that starting to simmer um, so that you could more quickly get to eating your delicious pasta. Um, or if you've got more time or you're doing this earlier in the day, you can just finish your sauce, let that simmer as long as you want, and then um, move forward with your meal. Uh, but I am going to start the water so that I don't delay uh, the eating process. All right, so what are the, the remaining seasonings that you need to add to your sauce? You've already chopped a lot of garlic and a lot of basil. Um, the next step is to get um, your Italian seasoning blend going. I basically like something like three parts basil to one part oregano to half a part of um, parsley and thyme. And I say that as three one and a half because that works really well with teaspoons. But basically, you'd be using um, three teaspoons of dried basil, um, which would be one tablespoon if you've got a bigger measure, or in my case, a whole bunch of fresh basil, then one teaspoon of oregano, uh, like so, um, and then half a teaspoon each of dried parsley and thyme. That's my favorite Italian seasoning blend. So that's what I'm doing here. 
and just putting that white on the plate to get ready to add to my sauce. And then I move those guys over so that I know that I finished with that. And I've already added a fair bit of salt to uh, the process for the cooking, so I need to add more salt. And then I give probably a number of grinds of cracked pepper going to about that half teaspoon you know, ratio. I think that works out pretty well. Um, so that's my seasoning one. Um, now for this large amount of vegetables that I'm cooking, I have found that that concept of you know, two beets, two onions, four carrots, and a head of garlic usually takes two standard containers of tomato paste. So just to make my life uh, a little bit easier, I actually use this vegetable cooking down time as an opportunity to open those cans and get those on the pot. Um, so that's that. Right at this point, you've got your plate of all your seasonings, you've got your vegetables that are cooking down, um, and you have uh, your wine and your water ready um, for adding. So then you just want to wait for your vegetables to cook down till they've gone down by about a third to a half, and you'll start to see that they'll change color, uh, and they'll start smelling uh, really uh, quite delicious. Um, so if you saw maybe how it looked at the start of the cooking process, here's how it looks at the end. Um, you can see that they have cooked down quite a bit. So now I am actually just going to go through and finish uh, the process. So we've made our whole seasoning blend. It just goes in in one plot. There you go. And then I actually think you get some really nice flavor. You give the garlic and the basil and the herbs a second to cook uh, their way um, down. So you can see what I'm actually doing at this stage um, is stirring in all of those components here. Add it here. You can see it's been added to the pot and I'm just going to stir them all in on the heat so that um, all that tomato and basil and garlic get at least a minute to really open up their flavors before we add the liquid and start the simmering phase. If you've got your head over the pot like I do right now, it is going to smell like heaven. And so definitely enjoy that. Uh, you should see that it kind of picks up some texture, it really comes together. And just let that sit for a minute. Um, often, all right, so at this point, like I said, you would use about a cup and a half of wine, red wine, something that you're willing to drink because a cup and a half is, you know, not, not a full bottle. Um, right, so you're still gonna have a pretty good amount left, so you wanna buy something that you're willing to drink, but maybe not the world's fanciest wine. Um, so I start by adding that in, and then I usually add about a cup of water. Now, this is where, I'll add the water uh, at the start to my tomato paste can that I want to get all the goodness out of. Uh, shake it, shake it, shake it. Uh, and then when I do that, I've got some nice uh, purple, purple water, uh, tomato colored water that we can get a fill with. And then a cup of water into the pot. Now, you simply stir that all together. And as you're doing that, you'll notice that the wine and um, water mixture will start to hydrate that whole sauce component really to a nice consistency. Um, so that's kind of where you want it to go. And then you just, at this point, rather than having to boil down a sauce so that it doesn't um, run uh, liquid, like my mom always said I had to do, you're just rehydrating it to the thickness that you want. And because we're gonna be using this for both pasta, um, pizza, and like a Parmesan topping, I wanna to keep it fairly thick. And so I'll kind of give you a look at it here when it's finished, and you can see the consistency if I hold it up, 
right? It's not really dripping. It's a pretty thick sauce. Personally, I like that nice thick vegetable sauce because I consider this a really um, healthy part of my diet. At that point, you put everything in you need. I would turn the heat down to low, pop a lid on, and basically let it simmer for as long as you want uh, to make your meal, um, and you can move forward. Now, as you might notice, uh, my water is boiling, so this is a really good time. Um, if, you, if you wanted to eat, add your pasta, uh, cook it up, uh, drain it, add your sauce, um, and then go forward with the first of your service auction meals. If you're interested in this, um, the next video, as I said, will be going towards uh, making a pizza with all of your favorite toppings and maybe some, some bread dough if you want to try uh, my recipe. Um, and the next will be with the cover jelly. Um, so I hope that this gets you started on the service auction. It would be really cool if during the first uh, evening of bidding, we can all um, have some solidarity in our homemade uh, pasta sauce experience. I guess I would also give a quick plug if you enjoyed um, doing this and it's kind of a, a valuable contribution. I think this is sort of um, my main contribution to the service auction this time around. And so if you thought it was you know, in your um, abilities to, to donate a little bit like you otherwise would have um, for maybe getting a pre-prepared meal, that would be a nice way to, uh, to contribute to the church as well um, in exchange for uh, my first attempt at a cooking show. I uh, hope that was fun, and I'll check back with you uh, next week. Thank you.